Welcome back to the Food for Thought podcast. I'm your host, Erin Alstrom. Today's episode marks the third in our Influential Women in Food series. Today, we're talking with Javon Nicholas, creator, founder, and owner of Egg Rolls Etc. Egg Rolls Etc. is a Chicago-based frozen food company that specializes in comfort foods. Javon, who has always had an insatiable love affair with all things food, knew from an early age that she wanted a career that would keep her close to what she loved. In this episode, we talk about how her career evolved from food service director and restaurant manager to job quality assurance auditor and now creator and founder of her own food manufacturing company. Javon walks us through how losing her mother and a trip to Taiwan became the impetus for launching a series of food products both made with and from love. Throughout the episode, you'll definitely understand why Javon was named one of this year's Influential Women in Food. From the advocacy work she does helping entrepreneurs learn how to build their businesses, to the community work she does helping children understand how to be better, more culturally sensitive humans, Javon truly is an influential woman in the food industry. We talk about her children-focused What's Inside That Counts program, as well as the advocacy work she does helping numerous women's business groups throughout the Chicago area. We end the episode talking about the advice Javon has both received and would give women just entering the food and beverage workforce. Enjoy the episode. Siobhan, welcome to the special Influential Women in Food episode of the Food for Thought podcast. So excited to have you here. And I want to kick things off by getting to know a little bit more about you. How are you serving the food and beverage industry right now? Well, thank you so much for having me here. And I serve the food and beverage industry, mostly food, by being a food processor. I have a frozen product line of Comfort Field, egg rolls, pot stickers, and ragoon. And my products are processed at a USDA facility. Uh, by my team and myself, and we sell B2C and B2B, uh, grocery stores, restaurants, and other food service establishments throughout the Chicagoland area. Can you walk me through how you arrived at this role? Walk me through, like, the schooling, your career progression. I'd love to hear. Love to hear a background story. Yeah, so, you know, first of all, I have, like, an insatiable love affair with all things food. Um, I knew at a young age that I, whatever I did, it had to involve food. And I've been very lucky to have over 22 years of all things food experience. I mean, I am a real foodie. I've been a clinical nutritionist at the age of 19. I was a food service director, a restaurant manager, started a catering company. I've also been a server while I, while I had a full-time job quality assurance auditor where I went behind the scenes of um, like the Knickerbocker Hotel and Five Guys and other uh, huge organizations and food pretty much auditing their standards. I did all of these things by the exhausting age of 29 years old, and I love it. Um, Egg Rolls, et cetera, actually came to be after I lost my mother All of a sudden, uh, she passed away. I ended up in Taiwan, Asia, on a language scholarship for two years. While I was there, I was really searching, you know, searching for my true talent, my true gift, and the people in the village that I lived in restored my faith in humanity and, uh, and gave me that little urge and nudge to become an entrepreneur. So the warm and fuzzies they gave me, I created in the form of a food product, hence egg rolls, et cetera. Uh, the first flavor is dedicated to my grandmother who passed away, but she lives on through this flavor. It's a collard green with smoked turkey egg roll. And I started off in catering, 
ended up doing the 2019 Taste of Chicago, won Best of the Taste, and just I've been food processing ever since. And I love it. I get to tell my story and share my comfort field memories with all through my product. Well, I'm very excited that you're also getting to tell your story here. I love just the progression, all the different things that you've done. That is, you really have touched all of the different parts of food processing, which is so important. Can you talk to me more about how you're partnering with community organizations to teach entrepreneurship and cultural sensitivity? Yeah, so before 2020, I've been an avid, um, an advocate of entrepreneurship. But of course, with all the things that happened in 2020, we got to see, okay, it's important not only to have education, but it's also important to you know, tap into the field of entrepreneurship. So I've been uh, very fortunate to partner with youth organizations within the community on the south side of Chicago and the west side of Chicago, like community gardens where we've taught virtual cooking classes, we've held different workshops where we meet at outside grocery stores because there is, you know, the whole grocery store uh, disparity in certain neighborhoods. So children are able to get together with adults and go and visit up north and western suburbs and just see different types of grocery stores and the products that they carry, Um, from trying kombucha, from trying kimchi, from seeing, you know, uh, the entrepreneur that's leading a tour myself product is also in the grocery store, so that inspires them. During the workshop, we also will um, have the youth, like, create different products and put a price on it and just to show them that even if, you know, you're in school, say that a youth goes away to college and they find out, okay, well, they don't have enough money to co- cover their books or tuition, they can use the power of entrepreneurship, you know, and their, to channel their secret thoughts and actually make some money, you know, whether it's becoming an influencer, a podcaster, baking the best cookies that they can make, detailing cards. Uh, we all have an entrepreneurship gift inside of us that's individual to us. And as far as cultural sensitivity, we also teach children uh, to never use the N-word. And people say the N-word, yes, nasty. We do not say nasty because there's so many different types of foods out there. There's so many different types of people and groups to meet. And it's important to be open-minded, to um, to connect with others, and you just never know where that road might lead you, you know, literally outside of your neighborhood. So definitely entrepreneurship and cultural sensitivity. I completely agree with you, and I love that you're doing that. I, I love helping young, well, no matter what age, but especially helping young entrepreneurs. So important. So I'm wondering, I in Learning more about you, I know that you um, have created a It's What's Inside That Counts program. Can you speak more about that? Absolutely. So um, we use uh, the logo that I have. She looks like a little doll. Her name is actually Chowan. And with the children, when we conduct different workshops, I always introduce myself as Chowan, which is also like the doll that looks like me. And the children say, Chow Wan, and I say, congratulations, you just spoke Mandarin Chinese as Chow means skillful and An means peace, which is also my Chinese given name, so it's Chow Wan. So back to the cultural sensitivity part that's there, but we use that doll to conduct, to conduct workshops, and it's a child-friendly um, image, and the egg rolls are pretty much just an interpretation of this lesson side that counts. When I lived in another country, I had the opportunity of not being Javon, not being, you know, someone from the south side of Chicago. I was just, I was a person, and I was there, and I was treated as such. And, again, back to that warm and fuzzy feeling that I wanted to bring back. I wanted children, uh, to start off with children, to see that it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you, where you're living. What matters is the seeds that you plant for your tomorrow, and I, I wanted to create a program where they can see their tomorrow today. So we use the egg roll wrapper as the blank canvas, and we fill it with something that's going to give us warm and fuzzy feelings that make us feel good from the inside out. So we put, you know, plant-based ingredients or, like, some of their um, – the fillings are – 
you know, with fresh fruits or vegetables, and then, um, you know, because we want to feel good in the inside. So that's what we should put inside of us, beautiful affirmations of love, encouragement, inspiration. And then you have to lock it in. So how do you lock it in? You give yourself self-love. And so with the egg roll wrapper, when we're folding it up in the process, we uh, we tell the children to demonstrate on themselves. We take the right hand and cross over our heart. We take the left hand and cross over our, our other hand. And then we squeeze and squeeze and squeeze like we do the egg roll wrapper, and then we roll it up. And, again, that's what's inside that council. So literally, I'm building a brand that loves to unite cultures and differences all inside of a warm wonton. So just like an egg roll is what's inside that count. I love that. Talk about a product that lends itself – I mean, it's delicious, and it brings cultures together, but also just how you've used that to um, help with other programs. And I'm excited that you're doing that, especially for the younger generations. Can you walk me through some of the ways that you are helping women in the food and beverage industry? Yeah, so I am a member uh, affiliate of multiple women-led and founded groups throughout Chicago. It's important, I think, I can help by being an advocate for women in business, especially those who are interested in the same type of field that I am. Uh, my consumer packaged good industry that I'm in is predominantly male-oriented, like just food or big box companies. So I really try to listen to women, uh, listen to other, you know, women in culinary or just in business, like what they're going through. You know, we seem to all have the same issues as far in regards to being heard, whatever platform we're in. So maybe – I might, you know, find someone in my network that would benefit another woman. I share information, and I think that women should do that. Women should specifically help each other by pulling them in the ranks, including them, you know, sharing a link to a woman-led grant, you know, sharing an opportunity that it's, you know, for women. You know, don't just keep it to yourself. So I really make a huge effort to do that, and I support other small um women-owned businesses, whether it's in food, fashion, photography, or podcast. Well, we love that, especially um, the Influential Women in Food program is in and of itself a uh, very similar program, women supporting other women, or women, I should say, supporting other women, mm-hmm. trying to amplify the voices and get the stories out there um, that maybe not everyone has heard because, yeah, it's a very male-dominated field. So mm-hmm. very excited that you're helping to champion um, not only just the other food businesses, but, you know, a lot of other women-owned businesses. I'm also similar. I look for and try to help um, my fellow female business owners first. So I want to transition a bit to some advice because I have a feeling you probably have a lot of advice. Curious. What is a piece of advice you were given early on in your career that you still use today? I would say um, something my mom used to tell me. She would always say, start where you are. And I I like to use that as an example because um, my journey – has not always been where I thought it should be. You know, a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, when I do mentor them, they'll say, well, I don't have the money, or I don't have the brick and mortar, or I don't have the staff. Well, start where you are. What do you have? You know, Google is free. If you're in an industry and you want to know, like, what are some trends in your industry, Google it. That's free. You can do your research. No plug to Google, but, I mean, do your research, and that's absolutely free. All the knowledge and and growth and wealth that, you know, like came out of other huge social media platforms that people can literally self-teach themselves, and they're free. Um, So I would definitely say start where you are, and the rest will follow. Okay. Last question for you, and you did – talk about how you mentor women or you have mentored women. So say you have um, a woman or several that are new to the industry. What two, what two or three pieces of advice 
would you give them? I would tell them, first of all, to change your thinking because that changes your life. In regards to uh, women, sometimes I know, like, with all the challenges that we have, you know, rather it's and then raising children, being a helpmate, um, working, going to school is so much, and it can become really, really um, challenging to pursue our passions. So it's important to change your thinking, turn it to positive thinking, um, create lists that, you know, you can jot things down and check them off and then come back to it. So organize your thinking, organize your thoughts, okay? And then secondly, forgive and let go. Um, That would be a huge advice, especially in the field of culinary, forgive and let go. And what I mean by that is that when you are an entrepreneur and you've created a product, the first thing you do is expect for your friends and family you know, to be your biggest support system, but they're not, you know, so you have to forgive them because they're not, they're not going to do it. They're not, or if they do, they're not going to be as consistent with it as you think that they should, you know, or share, eat, like share your post or buy your product and, or listen to your show or eat your food that you produce. Nope. You know, some will, some won't uh, make it a conscious effort. But just forgive them and just let it go and keep it moving because there are people out there who champion my business and others will say who are close to me, oh, well, you know, well, I haven't had your product yet. And I said, well, that's okay. But guess what? I know someone's eating them because I have sales and I don't have any inventory. So, ta-da, forgive and let go and keep it moving. I like that one. I might have to put that uh, on my little note board of motivations that I have all around my desk. And I have to remember that. Well, Javon, it has been an absolute treat to have you on this special Influential Women in Food episode of the Food for Thought podcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. This has been wonderful. For everyone listening to the Food for Thought podcast today, thank you for tuning in. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and just about everywhere you can listen to a podcast. Be sure to tune in next time as we talk more about the stories behind the headlines of the food and beverage industry. Take care. Have a great day.